Using surface plasmon resonance in silver nanoparticles to increase their antimicrobial properties, you're probably thinking right now, what does that even mean? Well, by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the main concepts of this topic and how they come together. When talking about silver, you probably imagine a shiny gray ingot. That is the usual appearance of polished bulk silver. However, silver can also exist in tiny clumps of atoms known as nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are defined to have at least one dimension that is between 1 and 100 nanometers, which is why you can't see any individual silver nanoparticles with a naked eye. They can be seen, however, using a transmission electron microscope. Use the 100 nanometer scale bar in the bottom right corner of the image for reference. In our lab, we have had the privilege of making silver nanoparticles of varying shapes and sizes. But what can these silver nanoparticles actually be used for? Well, due to the widespread use of antibiotics to treat bacterial infections, many pathogens have evolved to become antibiotic resistant, hence jeopardizing human health. Therefore, alternate forms of treatment are required to counteract this antibiotic resistance. A widely researched solution is antimicrobial silver nanoparticles. Silver is known to have strong antimicrobial activity. The silver ions are highly reactive and lead to bacterial cell distortion and death by binding to proteins and causing internal structural changes. They also have the ability to bind to and denature bacterial DNA, which may prevent the replication of these bacterial cells. This antimicrobial activity is increased with silver in the form of nanoparticles. This is a result of their high surface area to volume ratio and the unique chemical and physical properties which increase their rate of reaction and effectiveness against microbes. Hence, Silver nanoparticles can be added to dressings through processes such as metal vapor synthesis, which produces extremely small silver nanoparticles averaging around 1.75 nanometers in diameter and giving the bandages strong antimicrobial properties. These antimicrobial properties can be further enhanced by utilizing the surface plasmon resonant effect in silver nanoparticles. So what is surface plasmon resonance? We know that when silver atoms form a metal, their electrons delocalize over the body of the metal. We call the electrons on the surface of this body a surface plasma. Since they are all delocalized, they behave like a single quasi-particle. We also know that as we add more atoms to the body of metal, we increase the number of available energy levels. In a bulk metal, there are so many energy levels available that we essentially have a continuous band of energy levels called the conduction band, whereas in a nanoparticle we get something in between. Armed with these two facts, we can explain surface plasmon resonance. When light is shown on a bulk metal, the surface plasmon oscillates in phase with the light, and since oscillating electrons generate new light, our incident light is scattered in all directions. This is why metals are reflective. Since there is a continuous band of energy levels, the surface plasmon can oscillate in phase with any wavelength of light, and so all colors are reflected. But remember, in a nanoparticle, we don't have a continuous band of available energy levels. There is some sort of discreteness. A useful way to think of this is like ripples going around a ball of water. As the ripples loop around the ball, they interfere with each other. This means that there is a certain frequency of ripples based on the size and shape of the ball, where the ripples interfere destructively and there is no net ripple. We observe a similar effect with nanoparticles, where there is a specific resonant frequency that causes no oscillation in the surface plasmon. This is why nanoparticles of different sizes and shapes appear to have different colors in solution, because they absorb different wavelengths of light. But when the resonant frequency is absorbed, where does the energy from the light go? Put simply, it's released as heat. This can be used to enhance the antimicrobial properties of nanoparticles. By designing nanoparticles with a specific resonant frequency and encapsulating them in a targeting drug system, microbes can be heated to death with lasers without damaging nearby healthy cells.